Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so there's been a whole lot of talk about Kamala Harris, and frankly, there's been a whole lot of pearl clutching as well, honestly, coming from both sides. Apparently, there's certain no-go zones. It's too scary to go there. It's too scary to say something like that. You might just hurt some independence feelings. Is this really the route that we're taking? Let the left control the narratives, let them control what can and can't be said, what's politically acceptable and what isn't. Because I'm pretty sure the whole point of voting for Donald Trump, at least in the first place, was to stop that nonsense. Enough with the politically correct tiptoeing. How about if something's a fact, if something happened, if there's a clear, obvious concern, how about just identify it? How about just tell the truth? I don't know about you guys, but that's certainly my preference. Apparently, nobody's allowed to criticize Kamala Harris as a DEI hire because that's racist and you're attacking women or something. Really? but she's a DEI hire. Everybody knows it. Everybody's admitted it. The White House essentially admitted it. And apparently you're not allowed to mention anything relating to Kamala Harris and her very interesting relationship with Willie Brown, because that's offensive to women. How is that offensive to women? If anything, what Kamala Harris did to advance in her career, that's offensive to women. Because what's the message here? Attain power at any and all cost? It doesn't matter what you have to do to get there? Give me a break. I will not be shamed into silence by the manipulative left. Let's have a conversation about how Kamala Harris became Kamala Harris the politician. Let's have a conversation about Willie Brown. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so apparently it's offensive to question Kamala Harris's competency. It's offensive to question why she is in the position that she is today. No, it's not. That is not offensive at all. People do it to Trump all the time. Oh, he's a Nepo baby. He got everything handed on a silver platter. That's okay, apparently. But when you say that Kamala Harris got where she is, based on this culture of affirmative action, yeah, that's a no-go. Or making the claim that Kamala Harris rose to prominence because she literally slept with a guy. Yeah, apparently that's offensive too. Give me a break. Megyn Kelly did a piece on this recently. Honestly, I'm going to piggyback off Megyn Kelly because supposedly you're a misogynist if you mention this, but here's a woman mentioning the same thing. Kind of hurts their defensive argument a little bit. Take it away, Megyn. will not be shamed out of discussing this by people who say it's slut shaming or it's not relevant. It is relevant when a young candidate tries to sleep her way into politics and into power. And that is what it appears Kamala Harris did when she was a young political aspirant in San Francisco, when she had an affair with a man 30 years older than she was. She was 29 to 30 and he was 60. Willie Brown, who was like the godfather of San Francisco politics and very well known. And sure enough, that relationship paid dividends for her in more ways than one. That's right, Megan, as you noted yesterday, it's it's completely fair game to talk about Willie Brown. It's how Kamala Harris went from a relatively unknown Alameda County prosecutor to the forefront of San Francisco's social life and politics. It, it, Willie Brown was the most powerful politician in California when Kamala Harris started dating her, dating him. And she, he also gave her a number of positions. We're talking about $400,000 back in, in the 1990s. That's almost 800,000 in today's money. He appointed her to those positions that paid her lucratively. He gave her the keys to a BMW and he went around the most powerful and most wealthy circles of, of San Francisco and California politics with Kamala Harris on, on his arm, opening up the doors to her, her, uh, you know, professional and political future. So it was back when, again, she was 30 years old. He was at the time Democratic Speaker of the California State Assembly, quoting here from a Washington Examiner piece, which uh, is very good. Uh, the position that he gave her on the California Medical Assistance Commission in 1994 paid at that time over $70,000 a year, which is about 120,000 in current money. And she served on the board until 1998, so about four years. That medical commission met twice a month. So for two meetings a month, she was getting the equivalent of $120,000. And you know why Democrats in San Francisco were mad about it? It wasn't because she wasn't qualified, which she wasn't. It was because those positions are supposed to be saved for only the most prized Democrats who Willie Brown really owed favors to. 
who did really, you know, amazing things to keep Willie Brown in power. But instead, he gave one to his lover. He was, by the way, still married, though he was reportedly estranged from his wife for a long time. So, she, but she, this was technically an extramarital relationship, and they were mad that he gave one of his choice grifting positions not to somebody who'd done a lot for Democratic politicians, but to Kamala Harris. And not just that, there was another one. He gave her a second position as well, um, it, which was basically the same kind of deal, where he just put gave her a, an appointment. She reeked in tons of money. And boom, Bob's your uncle. She was off to the races in Dem politics. And then Willie Brown is on record as saying, I also then helped her with her next big position, which was becoming San Francisco DA. Those are the facts. Back in 1994, Brown appointed Kamala Harris to the California Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board, a position that at the time, back in the 1990s, paid her $97,000 annually. And this appointment was followed up the next year with another job appointment at the California Medical Assistance Commission. That's a job that paid her $72,000 a year. Both positions were part-time and didn't require any commitment, or at least much commitment. In other words, Kamala Harris was just walking into the most cushy, most privileged do-nothing jobs that you could imagine. Out of nowhere, she was a relative nobody. She then gets in a relationship with this Willie Brown fella, and all of a sudden, she's got it all. Let's add more context to that with this article from the New York Post. Kamala Harris's much older lover, that's Willie Brown, gave her a BMW and a salary-boosting job as she climbed Democrat Party ranks. She hooked up with this guy and got everything that she ever wanted. Yeah, seems a little bit suspect to me. You know, certainly raises a lot of questions, but apparently, questions that you're not allowed to ask. Give me a freaking break. These are the exact questions that we should be asking. You know, is she qualified for the job? Did she get there based on merit? The evidence certainly doesn't point in that direction. You know, how do you go from Kamala Harris, the next heir to the Democrat, Democrat Party, only to have your entire campaign tanked into oblivion in a two-minute debate moment with Tulsi Gabbard. How do you go from the bottom of the barrel to then instantly getting picked vice presidential running mate? Obviously, it wasn't because of merit. It was due to skin color. Joe Biden said he was going to pick the first African-American vice president, and then he did so. Did Kamala Harris find herself in that position because of her skills? Did she earn her way there by performing admirably during the debate process? No. Obviously, it was an identity play, which of course they're continuing to openly admit. The whole shtick is vote for Kamala Harris or you ain't black. Obviously that was the case, but you're racist if you even mention that three-letter abbreviation DEI. So going back to the question, is she competent? Well, it's not exactly confidence-inspiring when the whole idea is suggesting that you should vote for Kamala Harris because of the color of her skin, and that's the only thing to celebrate, that essentially she's the first person of particular X identity to serve in a role. Nobody's talking about accomplishments, it's just race, race, race. But if you criticize that, you're the racist. Make that make sense. And now, just following up on the idea of competence, how did Kamala Harris get to where she is today? You know, what happened with Willie Brown? Was that whole situation ethical? I think that's a valid question. Donald Trump mentioned this the other day during his visit at the NABJ. I suggested, Harris, that uh, let's take one. I said, Joe and I will go and take a cognitive test. Now, I do it with her, too. I would do it with her also. You know what? She failed her law exam. She didn't pass her law exam, so maybe she well, wouldn't pass the cognitive oh, test. Mr. President, are you saying she wouldn't pass? Just to be clear, I'm just you giving you the facts. Kamala Harris becomes the top cop, the top prosecutor in one of America's biggest, most significant cities, but she failed the bar exam her first time? Like, yeah, I know that happens, but is that really the best and the brightest that manages to get to the very tippy top of an industry or of a field? I don't know. You know, it raises a lot of questions and concerns for me, at least personally. This person, who's clearly incompetent. We're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the board as criminal. Abolish ICE. Yeah. Is that a position that you agree with? We need to probably think about starting from scratch. Say it loud. Say it clear. Everyone is welcome here. Giving universal health care, Medicare for all to people who are in this country illegally. I am opposed to any policy that would deny in our country any human being from access to public health, period. Got to the very tippy top in the world of, I guess, let's call it public law. 
It just doesn't make sense. And I don't think I'm a misogynist for suggesting that. I don't think I'm a racist for questioning, you know, the practices here. It seems as though Kamala Harris just magically fails upward. She's never actually earned anything. She's never done anything of real significance and impact. But now everybody has to vote for her or you're a misogynist or racist. Give me a frickin' break. The Willie Brown situation is clearly concerning. There's obviously substance behind the criticism. It's not just blind, extreme, radical attacks on her because she's a whammon. And frankly, I'm sick of people suggesting that, especially Republicans. No, we can't do this. We can't say this. Then what are you supposed to say? Valid criticisms of the Democrat candidate now is apparently off limits? I don't know. If anything, this sort of drop in confidence and all the infighting that I'm seeing on the right, if anything, that's what's spelling demise. You guys are allowing the Democrats to totally control the conversation. You're allowing them to shame you into silence. You're allowing them to create all of this fake hype and rewriting the history. You're feeding into it and then blaming the other people. Kamala Harris is a DEI hire. She is incompetent. It's very likely that she engaged in very unethical behaviors to get where she is today. And obviously that's a conversation people should be having. It's a massive concern that I don't think should be ignored. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.